Welcome back to Monster Tamer, a 2D Pokemon-like RPG created with Phaser 3. If you missed the previous videos, there will be links in the video description to the source code up to this point, as well as the complete source code for this video. There will also be a link to the previous videos if you'd like to catch up, so let's get started. Alright, so now to test all of our logic tied to displaying our messages, uh, what we need to do is we're going to come back to where we're choosing our menu options, and... For our item or switch in our flea, uh, we're going to go ahead and use our new method to go ahead and pass a message and a callback. So we'll go ahead and start with our item and we'll go ahead and test there. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to call this dot update info pane messages and wait for input. And so for our first uh, argument, we're going to provide our array. And we're just going to go ahead and do your bag is empty. And then we will pass a callback. And we'll go ahead and call this. And we're going to call our switch to main battle menu uh, method. So then what we should be able to do is we come back to our scene. If we go to our item and if we hit the OK button, we should see our text display. If we hit the OK button again, we should come back to our main menu. Nice. And so what we should be able to do now is if I just add a few more lines, what should happen is now if we choose item, our bag is empty. If we hit the OK button, we'll see our next message. And now if we hit the back button as an example, we'll see our next message. Then finally, after we process our last message, we come back and we do our callback. And so now we show our main menu uh, versus if we go to fight, You'll see nothing works. We just come back to our main menu. All right. So now we know our uh, logic's working. Uh, what we're going to do is we're just going to copy this block of code here. And we're going to go ahead and paste it uh, in our other options. And we're just going to go ahead and update our text. Uh, so we're just going to do you fail to run away. And then... What we'll do for switch is we'll say you have no other monsters in your party. All right, so let's go ahead and just test this real quick. We'll go to switch, we'll see our one text, we'll go to flee, we have our other text, and then item, we we'll see our other text. Very nice. So the last thing we're going to do is after we select an attack we're going to add in text to say hey you've selected an attack and then come back to our main menu so to go ahead and add in that logic we need to add a new method uh, so back up in our handle player input uh, we originally added a to do uh, to go ahead and add in this logic so what we're going to do is we're going to replace that with a new method and we're going to call handle player choose attack and then what we'll do is let's go ahead and create that new private method. So we'll come down to the bottom of our code. We'll add in that method. And now what we want to do is we'll want to keep track of which attack the player has chosen. And then that way we could notify our battle scene what that attack is. And then that way we can play the appropriate animation, we can display the appropriate text, uh, anything tied to that specific attack. And so to keep track of that, we're going to actually need to add one more property to our class. And what we'll do is we'll come to the top and we'll add a new private property. We'll call it selected move index. All right, and so this is going to be a number, or it could also be undefined if the player has not chosen an attack to use. Um, so after we've played our animation and we've rendered our text, we would reset this to show that there's no attack that we are currently using. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and add our type, and this will be a number, or it will be undefined. And then what we'll do is we're just going to make that undefined in our constructor. All right, so then we come back to handle player, choose attack. What we'll do is we are gonna make a new variable. We're gonna do let selected move index equals zero. Then we're gonna have a switch statement. 
and we are going to check our selected attack menu option and we will go ahead and add our case statements so we'll have attack move options and we're going to have move one and we will add a break statement and we will copy this and we'll do two three and four and we will add a default statement and we will do our exhaustive guard uh, just to make sure we covered all our use cases so we'll do selected attack menu option and then what we're going to do is for each of these we're going to go ahead and update that index so we're going to change this to if they do move one it'll be zero if they do move two it'll be one and then move three will be two And then move through four would be three. And then finally, after we do all of that, we're going to go ahead and update our selected attack index. And we'll set it equal to our selected move index. All right, and just one quick change instead of using move, we're just going to call this attack to be very explicit. And so we're going to update that in our class property up here as well. All right, and so we went ahead and kept our indexes uh, generic uh, because, uh, as you remember, we uh, want to just know which move option was selected, um, but we don't really care about the text. And once we know the index that was provided uh, in our battle scene, that's where we can match that index to the particular attack. And then that way we know uh, which attack was used, which animation to use, how much damage it should do, etc. Uh, so now that we're keeping track of this, we just need to go ahead and expose this. Uh, so then that way the uh, battle scene uh, can go ahead and use this value. So to do that, we're going to come to the top of our class. Right beneath our constructor, we're going to add a new get method. And we're just going to add a getter uh, to our uh, selected attack index. Uh, so to do that, we're just going to add a new property. We'll do get selected attack and we will go ahead and return this dot selected attack index. And so for our type, we're just gonna go ahead and copy our type from our selected attack index. And then what we're gonna do is we're also gonna wrap this in a check. So if this active battle menu is equal to our active battle menu battle move select, then we will go ahead and return that index, otherwise we'll return undefined. Uh, so this is just an extra uh, precaution, uh, so then that way we only really care about attacks if we're actually on that particular menu. If we're not on that menu, uh, there, there can't be a selected attack um, to display. So now that we have our getter, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to pop over to our scenes and let's go into our battle scene. All right, so what we're going to do is when we check for our player input, uh, we're going to add a check to see if there is a selected attack after we process the OK input. And the reason we're doing this is because if an attack has been selected, then that's going to be a trigger for us to do something different in our battle scene. Uh, for the time being, this is just going to be our trigger to uh, hide our menu and go ahead and display our message that says your monster is attacking. And then after we do the input, we would show our main battle menu again. Um, in the future, this would be our, our trigger to go ahead and transition to our states when we're doing our battle states. And it would also be our trigger for uh, knowing which attack has been uh, chosen. And so we can apply the animations and the damage. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to go into our if statement for if the space key is pressed, because that's tied to the OK. And we're just going to do check if the player selected an attack and update display text. So we're going to do if this battle menu dot selected attack equals undefined, we can go ahead and return early uh, since there was no attack uh, selected. 
Otherwise, what we'll do is we're just gonna do a console log and we're gonna do player selected the following move. And we're gonna go ahead and reference this dot battle menu dot selected attack. So we're just gonna write out the index that was chosen for the time being. And then we're gonna do our battle menu. We're gonna go ahead and hide the monster attack submenu. And then we're gonna go ahead and call our update info pane with our messages. So we're going to do your monster attacks the enemy. And then we're gonna go ahead and provide a callback function. And inside here, this is where we'll call our battle menu and we're gonna call show main battle menu uh, once we have the player input. All right, so if we wanna test our changes, let's go over to our browser. Uh, let's open our developer console. I'm just gonna move that to the bottom. And then what we'll do is we'll go into our fight. Let's select our slash attack. We see our text for we've attacked the enemy. If we do our input, we come back to our main menu. But then we see we have an issue where if we do fight, we don't get to choose our attack again. Uh, so what we need to do is after we attack, we need to clear our selected attack uh, index. All right, so to do that, what we'll do is we'll come back to our battle menu. Let's go into our show main battle menu method. And then what we'll do is at the bottom of our method, we'll just do our selected attack index and we're gonna reset that to undefined. So now if we attack, we'll see our attack and then now we can choose our other attack and we see our other index is chosen. All right, so one last thing we need to do is when we're updating our menu options, uh, one thing we didn't do was actually update our currently active uh, battle menu. Uh, so before we go ahead and set our info pane messages, what we're gonna wanna do is our active battle menu. We're gonna wanna set that equal to our active battle menu and then the option that was selected. Uh, so then this way it just keeps our state updated and clean. And ideally, once we do add in this functionality, uh, we would actually have this inside another method. Uh, but for the time being, since we have just have this placeholder, uh, we're gonna go ahead and add it here. Uh, so we'll have our battle switch, and then we'll copy that, and we're gonna do our flee. All right, with that, that brings this video to an end. In our next video, what we're going to do is we're going to work on refactoring uh, some of our logic tied to our health component. And then we're going to start adding in new functionality. So then that way we can actually animate it and update it when the player takes damage. Uh, so as an example here, uh, you'll see our health bar component is now animated. And that's what we'll be focusing on. Uh, so as a reminder, uh, there is a link in the description of this video to the complete source code for this video. And as always, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the content. If you did enjoy the video, please consider liking the video and hitting the bell icon to be notified when the next video in this series is released. For more great Fraser 3 content, please see some of the links on your screen now.